Hi there, I'm going to show you how to complete your lateral flow test at home. So your lateral flow test will come in a box like this and each box contains enough for three tests. Uh, initially you'll receive two boxes of these so you have enough for three weeks. Uh, once you open the lateral flow test box there are several things inside. The first is a cardboard insert which is important to hold the uh, test tube which has your drops for the lateral flow test itself. You will have a bag that contains three um, tubes which complete the dropping. You have three disposal bags here which are for when you've completed your swabs for your dirty swab to go into before they go in the bin. You have the three swabs uh, themselves. You have three little vials of the liquid which are used to complete the lateral flow test. You have three lateral flow devices which are inside these sealed packets and you have uh, an instruction booklet which you can refer to at any point if you're not sure of anything having watched this video. So the first thing to do is to prepare the area that you're going to complete your lateral flow test. So the first thing is to get a nice clear uh, sort of desktop or table and using some spray or an antibacterial wipe just give the area a kind of wipe down so there's nothing going to cross contaminate the test. You then need to either wash your hands thoroughly for 20 to 30 seconds or you can use uh, antibacterial uh, cleaner which will do the same uh, job. So once we're ready to start the test there's a few things that we need to do. So the first thing that we need to do is take one of uh, the test tubes out and place it inside the holder here for the extraction tube. We then need to get one of the little vials of liquid and when we open these it's quite important just to open them away from your face because they can sometimes uh, come out. So twist the top off, place the top in the bin and then we're just going to squeeze the liquid inside the extraction tube. There's about six drops of liquid uh, inside here. We can then take one of the lateral flow tests, open the packet, and we can see there is the back there, and this is the front of the lateral flow test. It has the code that you're going to need to register the test once you've completed it. It has the area that we read the test result, and this area here where it says S is the well in which we're going to drop the liquid uh, once we've completed uh, the swab. I'm going to place that there. I'm going to have one of these ready, which is our um, disposals for our swab. And so we're going to break off one of the swabs, and you'll notice it's got a side which is to open, which is the top end of the test where we hold it. We do not want to touch anywhere towards the bottom end of this swab as we remove it. So we just peel it back ever so slightly like that, so the end of the swab is sticking out, and with two fingers and the hand on the other end, we just remove the swab from the packet. So it's really important when we do the swabbing that we're going to do uh, four swabs either side of our where our tonsils are. Uh, most of you have done this in school already and you've had a practice at this part of the testing uh, that we do. Once we've done the uh, throat swab, we then place the um, swab up our nose and we turn it around 10 times up our nose when we reach a bit of pressure. I'll go through that again. So just before we complete the test, it's useful just to clear your nose so that we've actually got a clear area in which we can take the swab. So it's a brief blow of your nose and just clearing our nose there. So as I say, first four swabs this side of our throat. Just an up and down action there. I'm now going to do four at this side. And then we take the swab, place it up one nostril till we feel a tiny bit of pressure against the top of the nostril and we just spin 10 times. Now very carefully, we then place the swab into the extraction tube and it's probably easier now to remove the tube at this point. And what we're trying to do here is move the swab around in the liquid inside. You can gently squeeze uh, the sides of the extraction tube so the liquid is getting on the end of the swab there. And again, just lay it gently on the side so that we get the material from the swab into the liquid. 
and place that back. We're then going to place the swab into the waste holder there so that obviously that can be infectious if we do have COVID, so it needs to be securely away. So when you put the uh, swab inside there, that should have been for approximately 15 seconds. That's the kind of length of time that we keep the swab inside the liquid to transfer the material. Then with our sanitized hand still, we place the top of the extraction tube in, and this now forms a little dropper. Now what we do now is we're looking to put two drops of the solution into the well here that is marked S. Trying to avoid any air, so we hold it and we squeeze to try and avoid air getting onto the sample. So there's one drop and there's two drops. Now should the test be void, we want to keep hold of that liquid so we don't have to do all the swabbing again. So it's worth just saving that liquid until we know that we've completed the test successfully. So what we'll start to see now is the test will start to, the liquid will start to bleed up and you'll notice a bleeding of the um, liquid up into the test. And this means that now that the paper is absorbing that liquid and will start to record uh, whether the test is accurate. So the first thing is that we now leave that for 30 minutes. Now, after 30 minutes, we have to read the test. And this is the important thing to get right. There are two letters in the test area, a C and a T. Now the C stands for control. And what we're looking for is a red line across the C. This means that the test has been successful. So that does not mean positive or negative at any point at the moment. So that will happen probably after about one to two minutes, you should start to see the line form across that C. So take careful note of the time or set a timer for 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, you want to be reading the result in the test. Now, if the test is negative, then the final result will look like this top bit here. There will be a red line across the C, but there will be no line at all next to the T. That means that you have got a negative lateral re uh, flow result after 30 minutes. If we get a red line across the C and any sort of faint line across the T, then that means you have recorded a positive lateral flow result. Now, in the case of a positive lateral flow result, you must obviously report that uh, on, the, uh, on the website, which I'll talk about in a second but you then must book uh, onto uh, one of the PCR tests uh, that you can book online to get a confirmation of that positive result. Um, we have to do that from the home test because they're not done in a clinical environment. Now, sometimes you might get results where we do not get a line at the C. That means the test is void. The test has not been successful at that point. And so therefore, even if we get a red line or if we get no line, we cannot have that result. At that point, you should have your remaining drops inside your, your uh, test here, take another lateral flow test device and repeat the test again. Sometimes the devices can be faulty uh, and not record those results there. So if we can just zoom in here for a second now, you can start to see that it's been a couple of minutes since I put those drops in and we can see that red line that's starting to form next to the C indicating now that this has been a successful test and now I'm going to have to wait for the 30 minutes to see the outcome of that result. Now on page 15 of your booklet, it tells you that you where to and how to report the test result. So whether your result is positive or negative, you need to upload that result onto the website. Uh, essentially you go to www.gov.uk forward slash report COVID-19 results uh, it'll ask for some information, some details about you, uh, and you, at the end of it, it will ask whether the result was positive or negative. As part of that process, it will ask for the barcode of the lateral flow test, and this is the number that's printed just below the QR code there. So you would enter that number uh, on, from your test into the uh, website to report the test uh, that we have there. If it's a negative result, you don't need to let school know that you have uh, that, that you, that's the outcome. You'll report that via the government that's a negative and come to school a, as normal. Should you get a positive result, as I say, you'll record it on the website. You'll need to let school know at that point that you've got a positive test result and that you are going to book on for the PCR test to get that confirmed. 
School will only act on then things like um, test and trace and bubbles once we've had that result from your uh, from the PCR test, not just the lateral flow test. But it is really important that you isolate after a positive lateral flow test uh, until you can get that um, confirmatory result. Um, so good luck. Uh, with, with everything in terms of completing these at home. As I say, the booklet that you have has a step-by-step -step set of instructions on how to complete this, uh, or this obviously video will be available on the school website as well for you to watch again at home if you forget any of the steps.